and gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want a good, clean fight. Protect yourselves at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Chief Seconds, Ahmed, trunks right here, a little bit high. From here up is good. Augie, from here up is good. Okay? We good, clean fight. Touch him up. Good luck. Touch him up. Good luck. First thing we want to find out here, does Augie Sanchez belong in the ring? Has to show that real fast. A bad sign for the Prince already. The referee is a no-nonsense man. Ortega wants an outstanding welterweight. Well, whether he belongs in the ring or not, Augie's been here long enough to have signed a 30-year lease. <laughs> Prince Nassim needled Augie Sanchez at the pre-fight news conference, saying he had a case of nerves. At one point, Sanchez paused while speaking to the assembled press corps, and Naz laughed and said, what's the matter, Augie? Are you a little nervous? So he feels as though there's an element of man against boy here. And Sanchez is known to take a little while to relax and calm down in the ring. Let's see if he can get in a big blow, or if he takes a big blow early, it helps him to settle down. One thing about knockout artists, especially when they've got a lot in the first few rounds, it means they don't like going the distance. So you want to, if you, you're the opposite fighter, you want to tag them along, hit them every now and then, discourage them, let a lot of the air go out of the balloon before you go and mix it up with them. And of course, Nassim is one of the great knockout artists in the sport, but Sanchez is the one who's never been past the seventh round in his whole career. So when Larry Merchant asked Prince Nassim in a meeting, do you feel an urgency to get in there and get him out in a hurry because he's young, energetic, and a knockout puncher? Naz said, no, quite the opposite. I'll take my time. Sanchez has already gone to the body with straight right hands over and over. That means he's got a plan ahead. And I like the idea that uh, Sanchez is going to the body early. Hitting, making uh, Nassim understand that the fight goes long, and you're not going to have your legs either. And as Augie throws his right hand to the body, Naz starts throwing his left to the body. Prince Nassim more or less in a southpaw stance, and here he does have the right foot way in front, but oftentimes Naz will just square up and fight as an ambidextrous fighter. Sanchez much more the conventional stand-up fighter in this matchup. A little mechanical with it, but Sanchez unveiling his primary weapon. Most important thing early here seems to be that Sanchez does see what uh, the Prince is trying to do. He, see, he seems to see the punches coming just right there as he missed it because what the Prince what the Prince is, makes him so effective is his ability to punch from awkward angles that opponents don't see. The Prince was able to get him with a straight left hand that time. That's not a good sign. You want that to come later on when he's got his legs kind of slowed up a little bit. I would just add one thing to what you said, Larry. It's not just that he punches from extreme angles, but he does so with knockout power right. in either right. hand. Right, right. But when a, when a punch comes from an unorthodox angle and it's not seen, it carries even more power. No question. Right hand lands for Naz. First round was tactical. And as Prince Nassim goes to his corner, the first man to step into the ring to talk to him is Oscar Suarez. Before the fight, Emmanuel Stewart told me Suarez will talk to Naz the first three rounds, then he'll go in for the next three rounds. Never seen that before. He is unorthodox. Okay, now. You throw that left hand. All right, we have to follow with that hook. And again, I want you around the clock. Okay, fight. All right? Set him up. Set him up nice, all right? Like Manny says, it's not gonna be easy, all right, to get to get hit in the in the early rounds. Yeah, I want you. Work that jab and get into the flow. Get your rhythm. Catch okay. him with your jab. Catch him with your jab. Put your hand on the right, on the way of his right hand. And put your left foot outside. Sanchez was brought up in boxing by his father, who trained him until he died last year. Pat Barry, the new trainer, is his father-in-law.
right back to the body goes Sanchez again. He isn't doing much offensively yet, Sanchez, but he's showing some nice poise in here. Well, you talked about how fighters' punch out puts go down against Prince Nassim, and Augie threw only 28 punches in the first round. Nassim lands a right hand uppercut, the first telling blow of the fight. Good right hand to the body by Sanchez. That one hurt. Prince even tries to hit him back in the body because You're of it. You're right. He's got a plan, doesn't he, George? I mean, you can stick to your plan four or five rounds. Things can happen. So he wants to use the straight right to the body, eventually to set up the left hook. We assume. Well, you just want to take all of the jumping power out of those big, strong legs of the Prince. Then you can start landing a good jab and things like that. Straight right hand lands on the chest. For Augie Sanchez, Naz begins to jab with the right hand. Left cross by Prince Nassim. see Sanchez get a little more active and stop waiting around because if you wait around for a guy that hits that hard as a prince, you're going to get hit. Down goes Nassim on a straight right hand and Michael Ortega is going to rule it a foot on the foot. Well, I didn't see the trip, but that punch also bloodied the nose of Naz. If it had been a knockdown, it would have been the fifth knockdown of Nassim's career. Three of them were against Kevin Kelly and one against I thought it was a clean knockdown. What do you think, Harold? You go down on the end of a punch, it's a knockdown. And that's all there is to it. He got hit, he went down. It's a knockdown. And now this will be the second slip of the round. And oh, Sanchez is shaking his right eye as he though it feels as though he's been butted. He was hurt by a left hand jam as they were breaking up. Clean. And he was he was stung and jarred. So this fight, this round is taking a, a, a turn and he's trying to hold on and save time and survive the round right now. After getting hit on the break. That's ahead, that's ahead. Prince better be well. And another big left hook by Sanchez. And Nassim almost went down again. I and now he lands a big left hand. He better be well because this is a puncher. You just can't do anything you want with a puncher. And I'm not sure Augie Sanchez has recovered from the left hand that he took. But he's still, he's still dangerous. There's a mouse under the right eye of Sanchez. There's some swelling outside the right eye of Nassim. I was a real nice wake up huh? Okay, don't get lazy on me now, okay? All right, Pike? Don't get lazy on me. Take a deep breath. Let's see if it's a knockdown, if we can see their feet. Two right hands, to me, that is a knockdown. We still don't see the feet. We don't see the feet, right, left. And that's the exchange later on in the round. That's when the Prince thought he was hurt. Well, Tech is running hurt. around there, and I'm not sure what he's doing. is in round number two. Nassim 16 out of 30. Sanchez 13 out of 24. And even fight. Sanchez. Sanchez lands another left hook and a straight right hand. And Naz laughing but had to get out of the way as he was off balance and almost down again. You just can't play with punches. You got to get serious. Get those guys off their, the ball of the feet so they can't hit you. Blood trickling from the nose of Prince Nassim. If you're one of those viewers who's turned in or tuned in hoping to see Prince Nassim get his block knocked off, this may be your night. Well, there are always people who want to see a big mouth shot. Whether Sanchez is the guy who can do it is problematic, but he's certainly giving us more than he most has people been. expect it. Lance Sanchez the right has hand. not given up his body attack. That to the body with the right hand, straight right hand. It makes a difference when you start landing those shots on top when the body is hurting. 
And Naz, of course, sticking with the high-risk style, his hands below his waist. Guys like Barrera and Morales sitting around watching with their hearts in their throats, thinking, here goes my million if this guy goes down. And Naz lands a big left hand against Sanchez. And now Sanchez comes back with a right hand of his own. It's a pier six brawl in round number three. Shades of the Kevin Kelly fight. Hard right hand by Nassim and Sanchez held on and went down. And Ortega calls that a slip, too. Sanchez really has to gather his forces now, fight the fight he wants to fight, not try to get into a brawl with a big puncher. You know what happened? I do believe the Prince has had a double dose and an overdose of too much doctrine about the boxing. He's an instinctive fighter. He needs to be in condition. Right, Leave him be. All right, that's all. Blood on both fighters. Augie Sanchez getting a lot of big chances in the first three rounds here. They trade left hook. hand by Nassim. Oh. And right. another big right hand. And Sanchez grabs the right hand and holds on. For good, for good reasons. You see the quickness of Prince Nassim Ahmed flashing these punches out of nowhere. You know, Kevin Kelly warned him, don't lose your focus. No matter what happens in there, fight your fight. But he's getting a little flustered, is, is Sanchez, and starting to fight a fight that's more advantageous to the Prince. Uh, he's just taking a beating there. the trick bag and starting to give Sanchez a beating with hard power shots in the third round. Let him out, let him out. No, 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 no. Don't do that, don't do that. Naz laughing as he goes back to his corner. Is he whistling in the dark? You knew you had to work tonight. It's a championship. You're the champion, that's all. Let's go back to the second round and see if we see anything more. What it, what it looked like was there were two clean punches and Hamed uh, tripped over Sanchez's leg, but it was not a deliberate trip. It should have been accounted as a knockdown. And there you saw Prince Nassim holding on to the rope as Sanchez was punching him and trying to knock him down. Oh. And Sen then Nassim with the big left. Sanchez seems hurt still. Uh, he's got to re he's got to go back, retain his poise, start fresh, not just get into a war. With a with a guy with big weapons. Rounds. According to the timekeepers, there's more time because the doctor was okay, examining Sanchez's eye. Mike Ortega called time for the doctor. Sanchez benefits. Right. Thank you, George. He needed Sanchez a wake-up. He needed something to help. This was a good break for Sanchez. Augie Sanchez got an extra 30 seconds there, Harold Letterman. What do you make of that? Okay, Jim. When the doctor comes in, they call timeout, and then the corner gets a full 60 seconds to work on the fighter. And that's the way it goes. It makes the cornerman get out of the way so that the, you know, the doctor can look at the cuts. In any case, 30 to 27, three rounds to nothing, Prince Nassim Hamed. You couldn't take the second round away from him because uh, Mike Ortega didn't call it a knockdown. And at the end of the round, all he says is virtually out cold. Yeah, well, but common sense, uh, to me, he says that Sanchez won the round. I gave the round to Sanchez. Chris is throwing punches from behind his back. Yeah, the Prince's confidence doesn't appear to have been shaken. Unless, of course, he's putting up a pretty good front. He's in with a puncher, and these punchers will hurt you. Every time they hit you, they'll scratch you, they'll bruise you, and that's the way it goes. But he's in with a puncher who's throwing about 30 punches around, and Nass is throwing more than 70. And there's a huge left hand to the temple of Sanchez. He went to the canvas, but Ortega was already pulling Nassim away from it. Time. One point. And now a point deducted from Nassim for holding. He hit him down, okay? from the beginning. Right. Harold, tell me. Jim, Mike 
good oh. take. It took a point because let's, the let's Prince had Augie clean. Sanchez. Keep it clean. Took a, uh, the Prince hit Augie Sanchez when Augie was on the floor. Augie slipped out and the Prince hit him. And, and that's why he took the point. But in doing so, he took away a potential knockdown from Prince Nassim. No, I don't think it was a knockdown, it was a slip. But even still, Sanchez is on the floor, the Prince leads down and he wins. All right, we're midway through the fourth in what has become a wild affair. No, 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 let him out, let him out, let him out. Step back, step back. I said early on, this was a no-nonsense referee, and Prince, he doesn't benefit by those, the Prince does. No, in fact, a no-nonsense referee in Detroit in the Cesar no, no, Soto no, no, no. fight might have meant disqualification no, no, for the Prince. No, 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 no. Oh, man, that was a knockdown. That, 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 that one could have been a knockdown as well. Sanchez has been smart. When he was hit like that, he fell in to the Prince and then went to his knees. I think the referee hurt him by not calling it a knockdown. Sanchez out on his feet again as Naz lands a left hand to the face and to the body. Naz laughing as Sanchez again slides down the front of him. Left, right, right. And once again, you see the awesome punching power of Prince Nassim Ahmed. And that's going to be the end of the fight. Ring doctor into the ring. Mike Ortega there before they can start a count. Ahmed knocks out. Sanchez. I can tell anyone if the Prince comes close to your hometown, you better go out and see this. This is a phenomenon. This is it. This is it. Never seen anything so spectacular the young Muhammad Ali when he was Cassius Clay. Ever seen a bigger puncher in the lower weight class? You just don't know where the power is coming from. It's an athletic miracle what he does with those punches. We'd have to go back, back and watch the fight in tape to calculate how many knockdowns there could have been <laughs> if Ortega had ruled a knockdown every time a possible knockdown was there for the ruler. I think there was, a, uh, what, was there one knockdown in the fight? Two, maybe? There could have been six. All I can tell you is, look, he's an acrobat. <laughs> you better Another get his knockdown. You better get his on the team. Yep. <laughs> yep. And it was HBO who decided to bring this guy over like they did the Beatles way back, uh, Ed Sullivan. Uh, why don't you go ahead and give us credit for the Beatles too, George? <laughs> now watch how he holds his balance, keeps his eyes open. It's amazing. You never see a puncher with that kind of balance. Eyes wide open, takes a chance. Even when you're fighting a puncher, you take a chance. That's amazing. That is amazing. And the doctor was in the ring before Ortega would ever have had a chance to begin a count. So the fight was over, in effect, from the moment Sanchez hit the canvas because of all the punishment he had taken up to that point. And you're right, George. He got hammered by power punches in every one of the four rounds. And to think about it, he comes in courageously when you're in with a puncher. Sanchez is a puncher. He hurts you every time he hits you. And Sanchez has not yet gotten up off the canvas. And medical practitioners are getting order in the ring so that they can properly deal with Augie Sanchez. Get now, this stretch. is a live shot of Sanchez. Don't get excited. Carry out, okay, Augie? Once again, remember, his father-in-law, Pat Barry, is his trainer, and I believe that's the voice of Pat Barry saying, don't get excited, they're going to carry you out. I said early on, that knockdown that they call a slip was truly a knockdown and should have been counted to give this guy a chance to recover a bit and even get some mercy. But the ref called it a slip. possible protection is being brought to bear to give Augie Sanchez the best chance to leave Connecticut in good shape. Yep. He's young and he's in great he's condition. He's only 22. He's in good condition, so probabilities are great. As Larry pointed out, he had a long amateur career, almost made the United States Olympic team at the expense of Floyd Mayweather in 1996. 
There's Prince Nassim Hamed, his father at the side of the screen there. To the left, his father, Sal, who came from Yemen to Sheffield, England. Didn't speak the language. Brought his family there. And as Naz says, my father's my hero. He had a job in a strange country and raised his family. And a long prayer Final punch to numbers. Nassim Hamed, 81 of 229. Almost all of them power punches. Almost all of them devastating power punches. And Augie Sanchez managed to get off 114 punches and land 43. 40 of 98 power shots for Sanchez, who hurt Hamed two or three times in the fight, but was hurt much more badly in return. Probably don't want to upset the Prince. Nassim talking to trainer Oscar Suarez at the far corner of the ring as he and his group gather and try to stay out of the way while Augie Sanchez is lifted onto the gurney. You really want to hope that everything is going to be okay. Well, I think he was conscious, George. It looked to me as though he was conscious and listening to his father-in-law, Pat Barry, as he was told what was about to happen. That's Pat Barry in the shiny silver shirt leaning in just above Augie's chest. And both men to the left of Pat Barry are doctors. Obviously, the concern stems from the three punches that took Sanchez out and the force with which he hit the canvas after being hit by the last punch while going down. You can understand why the other fighters decided they didn't want this boxing match. There you have it. Well, that's why six guys didn't find the money quite appealing enough to didn't be here it. on August 19. Guys ridiculed the Prince for his style. Some have even stepped up to say, well, maybe his punching power isn't everything people say it is. Those are not the guys who've been in the ring with him. No, this guy can punch. He hits. He doesn't have the appearance of a true hitter, but he hits. Emmanuel Stewart points to Naz's powerful legs, soccer legs as he calls them. You know, it's strange though. He got in trouble one round, he sat down on the stool. The second round, he started looking to Emmanuel Stewart. Yeah. That tells you what he should be doing then. Well, it'll be interesting to see how he works out the politics of all that. So far, it has not seemed to affect him negatively, although this is the second time, George, this is the second time that you've looked at one of his fights and said, we're trying to make him a boxer. He's a natural the way he is. Get him in good shape, keep his eyes clear, his life clean, and he's going to do the rest for you. That's a hard decision for a trainer to just go and say, I mean, the pictures here you, you saw me. earlier. I'm sorry, George. Pictures you saw earlier, incidentally, Augie Sanchez's wife and mother in law leaving the arena ahead of him. And now, medical practitioners carefully taking Augie from the ring and no doubt to the nearest medical facility. We saw this the last time we were here at Foxwoods when a young man named Reyes Munoz was put in with Arturo Gatti in a very ill-advised matchup. Munoz wound up going to a hospital. Sanchez had many more qualifications for being in the ring with Prince Nassim, but Naz is a destructive natural phenomenon. Let's hope that Fox would, and certainly they should have a, as good a facility as the other places, huh? Let's hope this is all precautionary. And now let's go to ring announcer Michael Buffer for the official particulars. Time. Would like to let everyone know that Augie Sanchez is wide awake. He's fine just as a medical precaution. He's been taken out. A round of applause. He can hear you, folks. Let's give him a hand. Referee Michael Ortega calls a halt to the bout at two minutes and 30 seconds of round number four. The winner, and still the undefeated featherweight champion of the world, Prince Nassim Hamed. Prince Nassim clocks his 35th victory, 31st by knockout. We continue to look down the road 
toward the possible matchups with great fighters like Marco Antonio Barrera and Eric Morales, and maybe someday at 130 pounds, Diego Corrales and Floyd Mayweather. But now all of those guys have yet another chapter to think about in developing their perceptions of Prince Nassim Hamed. This is some kind of champion who sits and offer his title available, and all the contenders say no. It's unheard of, mm -hmm. and for good reasons. He has power in both hands, and he has the eyes of an eagle. It's interesting, uh, George, traditionally fighters with this kind of talent, they clear out their weight class, and they move up seeking new opportunity and money. We talked to Naz yesterday about going to 130 to fight Floyd Mayweather Jr. or Diego Corrales, and he said, hey, wait a minute, haven't I moved up enough? It was a very interesting take because basically what he was saying is, my talents are maximized in this division. That's right, and I've never heard it said so uh, cleverly. Uh -huh. The guy said, look, I can do it good at this weight. Why should I move up when I'm just what I want? The perfect power, perfect leg weight, everything. Why move? Yeah, in fact, Naz said, hey, is somebody asking Tiger Woods to put on 15 pounds? <laughs> He's perfect for what he does. Let's go to Larry Merchant in the ring. Thank you very much, Jim. They know how to play that All right, congratulations. Congratulations, Naz. Um, a question. There were some disputed knockdowns on both sides of this oh, yeah. fight. Uh, it's got to be with me, you know. You know I bring drama excitement. You know me, Larry. From a wicked entrance, from a flip over All the right, rope, to a knockout. Now, when no, he, wait, wait, wait. The main thing is, I just hope the guy... I wish that Allah makes him nice and safe and there's nothing wrong with him at all. That I first pray for Allah and I bless him. I want to be, I want to thank Allah first for my, for my win, for an unbelievable win. I came with a little bit of a sore throat, a bit of a husky voice, but I'm ready man, as you've seen. No matter what happens here, I've got my faith in Allah and I will always prevail. Second round, he hit you twice. Yeah, I know. You, you trip. Was that a real knockdown? Did you and you when you remember? Honest, yeah, I felt that my feet was a bit um, a bit off balance, but I give him the shot. Yeah, I think he may should have got that knockdown. All but right. saying that, it's up to the referee. Right. But saying oh, that, right. maybe we'll be able to get it up here on our in our screen. But if we can't, there were also one or two occasions when when you might have knocked him down, but he sort of he sort of draped himself on you and went to the canvas very shrewdly. How many times did he do that, Larry? I remember a couple of times at least. Well, I'll let you know. It was more than a couple of times. Every time I hit him the right hook, it really hurt him bad, and it's done. And that's what I'm telling you. Featherweights with Prince the scene when they get hit, it's a whole different story. When they get hit, it breaks the concentration, and they get ready to get knocked out. I just hope that they're all safe. That's what I hope. Well, at the end of the at the end of the day, or at least of the night, did this kid belong in the ring with you? You seen the guy knock me down. You seen the guy give me problems in some of the rounds. How can you say that should have been in the ring with me? Of course he should have been in. He's only lost one fight. He's got the same knockout percentage as me. Don't tell me about should he be in the ring with me. I pick I pick out the best. I picked out a fight. I picked a fighter that is basically harder and a better puncher and more dangerous than Barrera, Malak, Morales, all of them guys. And they never came to the table except Augie. Damn, right. I'm looking good. All right. But Barrera and Morales, many observers feel, will be fights that really define you as the great fighter you want to be recognized as. Yeah. When do you think you will get in the ring with them, or vice versa? Listen, I tell you, and you know, Larry, that I wanted them in the ring for this fight, and they wouldn't come. Now you can tell there's a little bit of a thing on my throat, but you know what I mean? I came to the ring as a champion, as a five-year celebrating my reign, and that guy tried to destroy it. But Morales and Barrera will come 2001 when they want it. And when they want it, they'll get knocked out, because I want it now. Thank you very much. Congratulations for welcome. another knockout. I bear, way, I bear witness there's only one God, Allah, and Muhammad is his final messenger. That's what I said, Larry, on the Bungu fight. Thanking you. Thank you All right, Jim, back to you. Well, while we wait for the big fights, Prince Nassim is scheduled next to be in the ring November 4 against a mandatory challenge.